In this chapter, I'll show you how to describe the benefits of service virtualization in the context of your business case and what this feature actually means. Service virtualization is a concept of mimicking connection with external third-party system without the necessity of those party involvement. This allows companies to replay incoming and ongoing messages independently to availability of those systems or staff and conduct manual testing in the very same environment where the change is implemented. This consequently saves time and effort, but most importantly, leaves the control entirely in our hands. We convert the risk factor into actionable tasks that we can completely control. In highly integrated IT environments, the number of interfaces can range from several hundreds for a mid-sized companies to several thousands in the largest organization. Processes that involve those integrations play an essential role in the ability to conduct your daily operations. And hence, they require proper and diligent validation. Let's look now at where the value of service virtualization really is and how we can quantify its potential. For a start, let's take a situation where some portion of our IT landscape is undergoing a change. Those could be project situations, like conversion to SAP S4HANA, rollout projects, or migration from one middleware to another. The same may apply for regular business as usual operations like periodical releases or business process adjustments. Generally available sources indicate that roughly 10% of processes are undergoing changes regardless of any projects. Depending on the context of the change, our first job is to calculate how many integration points may be subject to validation. This may directly relate to the existing project plan and its scope, or could be an estimation based on the past. The bottom line is, there will be a fraction of interfaces that for various reasons may require validation. Let's look now how this could be quantified by looking at where the value is created. One area is the general build phase. Imagine that your staff or a contractor is working at designated developments or configuration enhancements. Once those are ready, they should be tested and preferably in the same environment so that any potential defects could be promptly resolved and tested again. So how is this usually done? In most cases, some member of your team is picking up the phone or dropping an email to a third party staff and is asking for one or two cases of exemplary data so they have something to work on. In the absolute best case scenario, this can take up to one or two hours. In a slightly worse situation, it may take maybe a day or two. In the worst case scenario, this may not even be possible as the third party system may simply not be there, at least looking from a standpoint of the development environments. On the contrary, with service virtualization in place, an abundance of historical data at hand, every member of our team can trigger test data on demand in less than five minutes, as there is no one that you have to rely on, whenever it's needed, wherever it's needed. By comparing the average time of externally triggered execution to virtualized execution, we can evaluate the amount of time that is saved, applying those calculations to previously determined numbers of interfaces per release and per year, and the average labor costs provides the estimation of the financial gain only in the building phase. So we have our very first gain, that is already generating the value for us. And we haven't even touched the automation yet. The other area of the gain calculation is the general regression testing phase. Let's use the same assumptions as previously. Only this time, we will be looking at the general efforts of testing execution. Well-planned regression testing should assume that there will be a data prepared for testing in the quality assurance system, there is a third-party system staff available to trigger the processes when needed and that externally triggered tested data can be available in 10 minutes or less. 
Let's disregard for a moment the cost of making the third-party system and its stuff available for us. We'll deal with it later. While running the test, we will be focusing more on the number of executions required for us to deem the test successful. In other words, how many variants of one process should be considered before we are confident that the process is generally good to go. If we multiply the number of variants with the total number of interfaces that are subject to change and the time needed for its run, including the third-party system, we have a time effort of manual regression testing that could be offset in each release. With service virtualization in place, this can be reduced by a factor of 10, as there is no manual intervention needed from a third-party staff and members. Moreover, service virtualization can use real-world data that your production system has previously exchanged with the third parties. So if historical data are being used, there will be no issue with data correctness or quality. Having the estimated time effort in both approaches, an average labor cost per hour, we can easily calculate financial gain. Please bear in mind that this gain will accumulate each time there is a need for regression testing, which is usually at least a couple times a year.